Hello, this is Miss Judith from the Baltimore Library, and I'm going to read to you Hansel and Gretel. And I'm going to read the version that was my favorite when I was a little girl. And this is from the Once Upon a Time Scratch and Sniff book. So there are scratch and sniff pieces in this, and I think that's probably why I loved it so much. But the illustrations are done by Eloise Wilkins, and she is a fabulous illustrator, and she's done many, many books. So let's get started. There once were two children, Hansel and Gretel, who lived with their father and stepmother. Their father, a poor woodcutter, loved them very much, but their cruel stepmother hated them. There was a famine in the land, and Hansel and Gretel were often hungry. One night they heard their stepmother say, Husband, you are too poor to buy food for all of us. We need to take your children into the forest and leave them. No, the woodcutter said. Wild beasts might tear them to pieces. Good riddance, the stepmother said. Hansel, did you hear? Gretel asked. Yes, but I have a plan, Hansel whispered. When he heard the old people snoring, Hansel tiptoed out of the house and filled his pockets with shiny pebbles. Then he crept back inside and fell asleep. Early the next morning, the stepmother gave each child a scrap of bread. Don't gobble it now, she said. It's all you're going to get. Then the family set off into the forest. Now and then, when no one was looking, Hansel dropped a few pebbles to march th mark their path. When they were deep inside the forest, their father said, Children, get some wood so I can build a fire. Hansel and Gretel heaped wood into a pile higher than their heads. Their father set a blaze, and the stepmother said, Your father and I are going to cut more wood. You wait here. Hansel and Gretel waited all day. At dusk, when the fire had burned to ashes, they ate their bits of brown bread. Hansel, Gretel said, We're lost in the forest. Do you think we'll ever get out? Don't worry, Hansel said. We'll find our way home. With the moon rose, Hansel led Gretel along the trail, silvery pebbles that glittered in the pale light. They walked all night and reached their father's house by dawn. Their father was overjoyed to see them, but later they heard the stepmother say, Husband, we have only half a loaf of bread. This time we must take your children so far into the forest they'll never come back. No, the father begged, but the stepmother nagged and scolded until he gave in. Hansel whispered to Gretel, I'll drop pebbles again. But the door was barred and he couldn't go outside to get the pebbles. At dawn, the stepmother gave the children a bit of bread and they set off into the forest. Hansel tore his morsel of bread and dropped the crumbs on the ground to mark their path. When they were deep in the heart of the forest, his stepmother said, you two stay here. Hansel and Gretel waited and waited. When the moon rose at last, they looked for the breadcrumbs, but there were none to be found. The birds of the forest had eaten them all up. They were lost. They wandered all through the night and all through the next day with nothing to eat. By the third morning, they knew they would soon die if they didn't find help. At last, they saw a little house in the clearing. The house was made of gingerbread. Gretel rubbed her stomach. Hansel, let's have a feast. I begin with the roof and you can start on the porch. The starving children began to nibble on the house. Suddenly, the door burst open and an old woman hobbled out. Hello, dear children, what are you doing here? Doesn't that house look fantastic? I'd want to eat it too. The old woman who had, was really a witch pulled them into the house and locked Hansel up in a cage. Then she said to Gretel, you fetch water and cook something for your brother. I'm going to have him for dinner when he's nice and fat. The witch made sure that Hansel got the best food. Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Each morning, the witch said to the cage, Hansel, stick out your finger so I may feel if you're getting fat. But Hansel 
always held a bone through the bars instead of his finger. Since the old witch couldn't see very well, she thought Hansel was still skinny. This went on for weeks. Finally, the witch decided to eat him anyway. Gretel, get some water and be quick about it. Skinny or fat, I'm cooking Hansel tomorrow and that is that. The next morning, the witch made Gretel build the fire in the stove. Then she opened the oven door, saying slyly, creep inside Gretel and see if it's hot enough. Guessing that the witch would close the door and bake her and eat her too, Gretel said, I don't know how. Silly goose, screeched the witch. What do you mean you don't know how? Watch me. And she poked her head in. In a thrice, Gretel then shoved the witch inside the oven and slammed the iron door. Then she ran to open Hansel's cage, shouting, Hansel, Hansel, we're free. Gretel took Hansel by the hand and said, Come, brother, let's go home. After wandering for hours, Hansel and Gretel found a path that looked familiar. Then, after a long journey, they saw their father's house, and they ran as fast as they could until they got there. Their father hugged and kissed them and said, I haven't spent a peaceful moment since you've been away. Your stepmother is dead, so we can be together now. So Hansel and Gretel stayed with their father and lived happily ever after. That was a happy ending to the story, wasn't it? So now we are going to make our gingerbread house. So in your bag, you'll find a nice little box that's really easy to put together. You just kind of pop it open and you're going to fold down the little flaps and there's a little flap to hold, fold down for the top part. Then you're going to have your roof. Now you need to fold it in half once so that it looks like this and then do a little flap on the bottom just like these flaps here. So that it looks like that. In your box, you're gonna find circles that are for the roof, for the candy pieces for the roof. You'll find your door, and you'll find some fun checked pieces that are your windows. So what you will do is take your roof first, and there should be 12 circles that fit on the side of the roof. So I'm just taking my glue stick I'm putting some glue on. I'm gonna layer the pieces on the roof. So you should fit 12 squares on each side of the roof. So the roof will look like that. So you do that to both sides. Now what you'll do is put a little bit of glue on those little flaps that we made. So that when you put your, your house together, you're gonna put your box together like that and put the, the lid in. And where these little pieces are open, you're going to stick it in there. so that you've made your roof. Then you will be able to stick your door on. So here's your door. Put your windows on the sides. And then you're gonna have a bag with lots of little bits of glitter pieces and fun things to make it look like shiny pieces of candy. And you can put that all over your house and then you'll have your little gingerbread house. I hope you're having a great summer and we really miss you. So please call us up and let us pick out some books for you. You can take them home and we really hope you have a great summer. Have a great day, bye.